Hi, here we are reading Viking Adventure by Clyde Robert Bula. Today, we're reading Fog and Storm. There were more days of fogs. There were days of wind and rain. One night, Sigurd and Aron were rowing side by side. Aron said, Our captain talks more with you than with anyone else. What does he say of Greenland? What do you mean? asked Sigurd. A week ago, he told us we would soon land in Greenland, said Aron. Now he tells us we are far from there. Why is this? In the fog, we missed Greenland, said Sigurd. The wind drove us to the south. Then where are we now? asked Aron. South of Greenland and sailing west, said Sigurd. Our captain has told us this. Do you not believe him? I believe him, said Aron, but some of the men do not. What do they say? asked Sigurd. They say our captain does not know how to steer the ships at Aron. They say we are lost. Does Halford say this? Halford, yes, and others, said Aron. Halford is afraid. He wishes to turn back, said Sigurd. Would you follow him or Gorm? I would follow Gorm, said Aron, but all the men do not feel the same. Another rower came to take Sigurd's place. Sigurd went below to rest and sleep. It was morning when he woke. Someone was shouting. He ran up the ladder. Halford was on the deck with a crowd of men about him. Halford was breathing hard. There was a wild look in his eyes. It came to me again, the dream, he cried. A man rose out of the waves. He held up his hand and spoke to me. What were his words? asked one of the sailors fearfully. His words were turn back, said Halford. Gorm was on the steering deck. He called Ivar to take the tiller. He came down to where the men were talking. I too have had dreams, he said. So have we all. But this was a dream of danger, said Halfred. A man rose out of the sea. His eyes were terrible. He said, turn back. How did you answer him? asked Gorm. Answer him, said Halfred. How could I answer? When this terrible man next comes to you in a dream, speak up, said Gorm. Tell him we are not afraid. Tell him we will not turn back until the captive until the captain gives the word. Halfred turned pale with anger. Some of the men laughed at the joke Gorm had made of Halfred's dream, but there were some who did not laugh. Late that afternoon, Gorm was back at the tiller. tiller. Sigurd went up to the steering deck and spoke to him. There's Halfred and Gorm. May I sleep by the door of your room tonight? Why? asked Gorm. I will keep watch, said Sigurd. You think I am in danger? asked Gorm. Yes, said Sigurd. I have seen the men talking together. I have heard them whisper, said Gorm. It means nothing. Once we are on land, this will be forgotten. The men say we are lost, said Sigurd. We are not lost, said Gorm. Land is near. I have seen land birds. And he stopped. He was looking straight before him. What is it? asked Sigurd. Look, said Gorm, just below the sun. Sigurd looked. There were a few clouds below the sun, and there was something long and dark that was not a cloud. Is it? he began. Yes, said Gorm. Land, said Sigurd. Then he shouted it. Land! Land! Here's the next chapter. Remember this day. And then put out the oars and began to row. So they got to remember, they're all three of them on this rower, and they're going like this, rowing, rowing, just after sundown. A strong wind filled the sail. Still the sailors kept rowing. With the wind and the sail and the men at the oars, the ship almost seemed to fly. Sigurd took his turn. He rowed for half the night. The rest of the night he stayed on deck waiting for the morning. The sky grew light. He saw the land again, much nearer now. All gray it was at first. The sailors were pointing and shouting, but when the sun came up, and shone on the land, they grew quiet. They looked in wonder at the shore and the forest beyond. The shore was golden against the bright water. The forests were all the colors of autumn, yellow and brown and red. Aron said, see, see the red of the trees? Just like fire, what a beautiful land is this Vineland. See the little harbor, said Ivar. We can anchor there. They sailed into the harbor. When the ship lay at anchor, Gorm spoke. Some of us will go ashore. Some must stay to guard the ship. Those who go ashore must be armed. In this strange land, there may be danger. The ship carried two small boats. 
One was put over the side. Gorm chose a dozen sailors to go ashore with him. Sigurd was among them. They rowed away. Gorm said to Sigurd, Remember this day. All that you see and do, you may tell. You may sometime tell your father. So remember it well. They reached shore and pulled the boat up on the sand. We must keep together, said Gorm. They walked through the tall grass along the shore with their shields held before them. They started into the woods. One of the men had been a farmer in Norway. He took a stick and dug under the leaves and grass. Look at this! He held up a handful of black earth. Think of the grain that would grow here! They walked on. The woods were still until a bird began to sing. There is peace here, said Gorm. A man might wish to stay forever. Does no one live here, said Sigurd? They watched for roads and houses. They saw none. Beside a stream, they, they lay down and drank the cold, fresh water. It is time we turn back, said Gorm. The rest will be waiting to set foot on shore. On the way back, they saw a deer. They saw a bird such as they had never seen before. It was as large as a goose. Its feathers were brown and its tail spread like a fan. As it ran, it made a rattling sound. <laughs> I bet you it was a turkey. Now we know, said one of the men, there is game in these woods. They came to the shore. The boat, the small boat was there where they had left it, and now the ship's other boat was on the sand beside it. There were those on the ship who could not wait, said Gorm. Well, I cannot blame them. Sigurd, look at the look at the tracks in the sand. I see where the men walked. They went into the woods on the far side of the harbor. We need not wait for them, said Gorm. Come, let us go back. He stopped, listening. In the woods, someone was shouting. Is it not Halfred? said Gorm. A band of men came out of the woods. Halfred was leading them. They were running. One man fell in the grass. Another stopped to help him. Halfred ran far ahead of the others. To the boats, he cried. What has happened, said Gorm. We were set upon, said Halfred. Who set upon you, asked Gorm. The savages, said Halfred. Savages? Here, said Gorm. Yes, we were in the woods, Halfred told him. When arrows began to fly past us, we saw the savages on every side. There's Gorm, and there's Halfred and his men as they're running, and there's the man that fell. See them running out of the woods? Did you not fight back, asked Gorm. Yes, said Halfred, but they would not stand and fight us man to man. They hid behind trees. We made a circle and put up our shields. It was only this that saved us. You lost no men, asked Gorm. No, said Halfred. Some were hit by arrows, but they kept to their feet. They are here with the rest. He looked back and his face turned pale. A man had come out of the woods. It was, he was tall and straight. The sun shone on his black fur and red brown skin. He wore an animal hide about his waist. He raised his fist and shook it. Then he disappeared into the forest. That savage, he is their leader, said Halfred. He has gone to bring the others. Gorm said to the men who had gathered about him, quick to the ship. And very quickly, the two boats put out from the shore. There you go. Wow, two chapters. That was exciting, though. They finally found it. Wow. More tomorrow. See you then. Bye.